What is up guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can deploy your Django application to Python Anywhere. So before we begin, make sure that your Django project is hosted on your GitHub. So this is mine. As you can see, I just have a simple Django website hosted on my GitHub. So feel free to use this site if you don't have one of your own. So you can go ahead and read uh, this little bit up here. Uh, it's basically talking about how it is, about how the code is stored. But we're going to jump right into it. So the first thing we need to do is clone our repository. So what you're going to do is log into Python Anywhere and from the home page, you'll see consoles. We want to open up a new bash console. Now inside of here, the first thing that we're going to do is clone our Django project. So we can just do git clone and then go into your GitHub, go to clone and copy this URL. Go ahead and paste that in there and hit enter. So after that is done, the second thing that we need to do is to create a virtual environment and install Django and any of the other requirements you are using for your project. So for that, we're going to use this command right here. So go ahead and copy that. And back in the bash console, simply paste it. But we need to change two things. First, we don't want Python 3.4, we want 3.8. Second of all, this right here, my site dash virtual env. You can go ahead and change that name if you want, but that is the name of your virtual environment. I'm gonna keep it as such. So hit enter when you're satisfied with that. All right, and when that finishes, you should have your virtual environment created and it should be activated. After that, we need to install all of the requirements for our project. Most importantly, installing Django itself. So for this, we can say pip install Django, just like you would do on your virtual or on your own machine. And this right here will take a while. And they actually mention that in the documentation. It says, warning, Django may take a long time to install. And this is because Django creates a lot of small files during its installation. So this will take a little bit and I'll be back when it finishes. All right, so we have successfully created our virtual environment. So the next step is to set up our web app and WSGI file. So to do this, we're going to go to the web tab. So from the bash console, come up here to the right and right under files, you'll see web. Go ahead and open that link in a new tab, keeping the bash window open because we will need that later on. So inside of here, it will probably say that you have no web apps, and that's fine. Let's go ahead and add a new web app. So this is just telling us that our web app's domain name will be at this, and if you want a custom domain, you will need to upgrade to a paid account. So we're just gonna hit next, and here, it will prompt you to select a Python web framework. So we do see Django here. But we don't want to click that. We want to hit manual configuration. Here we can select a Python version. So we're going to select Python 3.8 because if you recall back here, we created our virtual environment. We did Python 3.8. And if you're not sure which one you did, you can always go Python dash dash version and that will tell you the Python version. So I'm going to choose 3.8 and we'll hit next. So the next thing to do is configure our virtual ENV. So let's go back here to our dashboard and in the virtual ENV section, we need to click enter path to a virtual ENV. And here we're going to type our virtual ENV name. So I used my site dash virtual env. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it here. And you don't need to do the entire path. 
all you need to do is type the name of the virtual env, env and Python Anywhere is smart enough to fill in the entire path for you. So we'll click check, and there we go. As you can see, it filled in slash home slash my username slash dot virtual envs slash my site dash virtual env. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is edit our WSGI file. So what we can do is we can go back here and in this code section right above virtual env, we'll click this WSGI configuration file. And this will bring us into an editor where we can edit this file. So it's gonna be a bunch of stuff here. And the one we want is for Django. But for our convenience, let's just delete everything and come back into the documentation and copy the code they give to us. Now we'll paste that in here. Now we do have to change a couple of things. First is this path on line seven. We need to change our username. So I'll say Benjamin Carlson for me. For you, you put your username. And then my site. This is, as you can see here, the name of your Django application. So if I go back into the code, my site, then I have my manage.py, and then my site folder, which has settings.py and all this stuff, as well as the WSGI file. So make sure to change that my site to whatever your project is called. This might work for you just having the name of the project, but for me, I cloned this Git repo, so I have Django dash Python anywhere before this folder. So I need to add that before. So that's one thing to keep in mind. If you clone from a GitHub repo, make sure to add this, the name of the repo, and then the name of your project. And if you don't want to have this here, the name of the GitHub repo, what you can do is, if you remember back to when we cloned the repo, instead of saying git clone and then this, you can say git clone this and then a dot after it, as you see on the screen right now. If you did that, it would disregard this name here and just put these files directly into wherever you're cloning it. So it would not make this folder. So it's up to you. You can either clone it how we did and add the name of your git repo, or you can clone it and put a dot at the end and you won't need this. But either way, if try this, if it doesn't work, remove this and it should work. Then we cl can click save and we can sync our changes. So the last thing we want to do before we check if it worked is to set up our database. So just like you would run on your local machine, python manage.py run uh, migrate, we can do that in our bash console as well. So back here, we can simply hit ls. And what we're going to need to do, I believe, is go into our project. So let me cd into this ls and like cd into my site. Now if I ls, I'll see my database, my manage.py file, and then my my site folder, which holds the contents of my application. So let me go ahead and, whoops, didn't want to copy that. Let me go ahead and copy this command and go ahead and run it here. And there we go. As you can see, just like you'd see on your local machine, it applies all of the migrations. All right, so after we migrate this, we should be all set to check and make sure that this worked. So let's go back here, and in the right-hand corner, we can go to files, or sorry, not files. Uh, we want to go to web, and we can, we'll reload one last time, and then we can open this in a new tab. All right, so if you get this, that's 
good. So what this is saying is it's not allowing this URL to host my Django application. So we can fix that fairly easily. First, let's go into our files and let's navigate to where this project is being stored. So go into your folder right here. So for me, Django-Python anywhere, my site, my site again, and then over here, we want to open up settings.py. And here we can edit the file, just like you'd edit on your local machine. So the line we want is 28 right here, allowed hosts. So right now, it's not allowing it to host on anything. So there's a couple of things that you can do. You can add a star, which will allow you to host your Django application anywhere, or you can add just the URL you want. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add a string, and I'm going to go ahead and copy this and paste it just like that. We can disregard that. Perfect. And if you want to add more URLs, you can simply do a comma and add another one. This is just a list. So now I'm going to hit save and refresh our changes again. And now when we go back here, if I refresh, it should work. Okay, and there we go. So as you can see, we are getting our Django application coming through successfully. All right, guys, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, please be sure to subscribe and like this video and stay tuned for more videos like this.